All right, well, I'm already live streaming, so um, I'll be right back. I'm going to grab some water. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, yeah. Hey, there's RJ. All right. All right. All right. Well, we're looking at EVAX, and that's about it right now. That looks uh, prospective. Um, it looks okay. It's kind of basing at the $3 level. Maybe if it breaks 3.5-ish. There it goes. It's already curling up and perking up. This is it's already happening. Uh, I wanted to see if I can get any action on that. All right. All right. So, uh, Randy, did you read that last night, what I wrote there about um, all the different borrows? Situations. Um, so yes. Anybody else read what I had written in the uh, momentum section on mm, easy to borrow, hard to borrow, none to borrow? All right. So EVAX is none to borrow. So how does that make you feel about it? Now that you've read that, if you've read that, those of you who read that, how does that make you feel about it? <clears throat> yeah. It's got less than zero chance of having, uh, of going parabolic. Essentially, okay, what is going parabolic, if you think about it? Um, we'll talk about that more in um, class tomorrow night, I guess, because I'm, I'm going to talk a lot about that stuff. But it can't go parabolic. Uh, parabolic is when you get uh, – uh, what's the word? Uh, like a uh, proportional – that's – Stretching or multiplying. You get a multiplying. That's the word. Going parabolic is when you get a multiplying of a multiplying of demand pressure, a multiple. Um, okay, something like that. Um, and that's why the bars go from being one particular height to starting to stretch out, and then you know it, it, that it help contributes uh, to it going parabolic until it, you know there's a whole bunch of things that make it go parabolic. We'll talk about mostly it's that though. And um, a good 50% of that ability, maybe even more, maybe more, is how many people are in it short. And I'm not talking about like what the short interest is. Although that can help in the beginning, but then once the float's rotated, that means nothing. Well, it means less. So EVAX can't go parabolic. 
So why why fuck around? But I mean, hey, maybe Evax will go to four dollars. Maybe it'll go to four twenty five or something like that. Maybe, maybe. But it's certainly going to only do that on its own merit with linear buying demand. It doesn't. It it's not going to get that parabolic quality, other than from just regular demand. You know, if demand just starts going way up. So check the news on it. You know, that's about all it's got going for it. It cured cancer or something, you know. There you go. But see how it's even when it's perking up, it's not burning. It's not burning shorts. Do you notice that? You guys looking at uh, Evax at all right now? Here, I'll pull it up. See how when it perks up and it's starting to go up, every time it breaks a key level that shorts would normally cover at, there's no like blips. There's no, oh God, there's no f fanatical moves, you know? So all that's going on is FOMO. That's the only thing that it's, it can have going for it is FOMO, which can do something. And uh, it can increase and look parabolic, uh, but that's it's actually just a demand only moving. Uh, if it does that, so it has potential is the point, but it's going to have to be due to real demand increasing if it's going to get intense. So it's very unlikely that it's going to move. Three dollars and sixty cents would be the uh, breakout. You know, Target probably over four dollars. I wouldn't get too uh, well concerned about it. You know, there you go on Evax. Okay, that's that's to tie it into what I was writing last night. All right, well let's take a look at the market. Uh, did I already go live here? Yes, I did. Okay, good. We are live across the board. So we are within a yesterday's. Um, candle range and within the prior day's candle range and just at the top of the prior day's candle range. This, this last few days have just been a standstill, uh, a stare down standstill. And today it's going to get even worse. It's going to really tighten up uh, until the Fed meeting uh, and then uh, the Fed uh, announcement. And then during that conversation over the next two hours, you know, a lot of uh, volatility gets released in the market, uncertainty. Volatility drops. You do get choppiness. But um, the day of the Fed release, all last four times that the uh, Fed uh, hiked rates, the day of from the market open to the market close was an average gain. Every single one of them was green and was an average gain of 1.86% on the S&P 500, more on the, the Qs, over 2%. So that's a four uh, out of five, today being the fifth and unknown if it's going to do that, four out of five, 80% chance that today the market, from the market open, will close higher, 2% higher, roughly. So you might be able to uh, get calls today. You know, don't risk anything... Uh, don't risk more than you know you intend to uh, lose, which should be no more than one percent of your portfolio. And um, you know you can give that a try. So that's one particular trade that could go on today. So the market might perk up a little bit, but it also will be on lower and lower and lower volume. We're in Tesla with some padding already, but you know can you see how close Tesla is to this breakout? It's a gorgeously formed nearly perfect cup and handle inside a cup and handle like a uh, resonant harmonic wave i mean it's it's got just about it's attracting just about every type of trader tesla right now and it's got a breakout trade coming up uh today if it if it breaks um and so tesla is extremely hyper set up to run. And so because of, that, because of that, a few days ago, because I knew that that could happen, thinking a couple days ahead, the domino effect, uh, we are in at 300.5 with the intention and purpose of building up some padding for this Fed release. Why do you want padding going into an uncertainty event? 
because you want time and price to cut if the shit hits the fan and then you haven't lost any money on your original endeavor. So now your loss side is mitigated in a large part. The risk has been mitigated and all you can look forward to is reward. So just do remember though, that when the fed releases their information um, and starts talking about it, uh, there's going to be all kinds of volatility released on the market. It, it's sort of like, um, I don't know, cutting a string or something on a bridge, on a rope bridge, you know, it, it, I don't know uh, what it's a good analogy, but it, it, initially uh, there's going to be just some snap and wriggle, you know, uh, and you don't know whether that's going to be a down or an up initial wriggle, but uh, I will tell you this, the initial wriggle is just that it's just an initial wriggle. You're going to need to, watch how it creates pivot points and then start to put together the pivot points to create what's going on. You know, is it sideways? Is it a downtrend? Are we doing lower lows, lower highs? Are we doing higher highs, higher lows? Are we ranging? Is it creating an Elliott wave? Which way? Um, is it tightening up? Is it a flat top wedge? It is a bottom uh, wedge, a flat bottom wedge. Uh, so, you're going to need to see that at 2 o'clock today at Eastern Standard Time. You're going to need to see that. Uh, there is a very rare, maybe 10% possibility that the Fed uh, raises rates 100 basis points. That would be a cataclysmic surprise. I mean, it would be uh, like uh, almost apocalyptic for the day anyway, because that is completely not expected. So we expect 75 basis points. Everybody expect it, that expect it, expects it. It's already priced in. And uh, the market is not going to react to 75 basis points. What it's going to react to is not something else. So whatever people are betting on that it's going to be something else, those people are going to be annihilated in that moment. You understand? So when it's 75 basis points, which is where we're priced into, uh, what gets released is everyone who bet otherwise. And then the market will, you know, take its course and we'll see what that is. Then additionally, for the next hour or two, uh, the Fed chairman will speak and talk about projections based on the numbers they have. And it really doesn't matter if they're smarter or not smart or dumb or idiots or whatever. Whatever they say, hedge fund managers have to follow. You know, institutions have to follow because if one billion dollar client uh, comes around and says, what the fuck are you doing? Did you not hear the Fed? The Fed said X, Y, Z. And uh, then that billion dollar client tells their other billion dollar client, dude, they didn't even listen to the Fed. All of a sudden, you know, they're going to cut their positions by half or pull out completely out of that hedge fund. So it's very important uh, to it's very important to listen to and follow no matter if whether you disagree with it or not uh, and to understand the market reactions to take them take them for real uh, what uh, the Fed says, whether or not it's wrong, uh, what, the, what he says, and whether you uh, agree with it or not. Yeah, Kelly says 100 basis points would shatter the market. It certainly would be a total reversal in character. Uh, there's just been no surprises on this market. There's really no indication that it that it would be 100 basis points. It was not going to be. But that's a very, you know, real long shot. A real long shot, like 9 out of 10. 1 out of 10, like a 10% chance. So in other words, in these cycles, which happen like every 10 years and the economy, flip, you know, freaks out and we have a potential recession and we got to do these uh, rate hike type adjustments, uh, you know, you're talking about once, in 90 years, over a 100-year span, maybe uh, something like this might happen. Where the, I mean, so it's not going to happen. You don't have to worry about it. You don't even have to worry about it. And by the way, that is how we're going to play 
the Fed meeting at 2 p.m. I'll probably come on live and we'll be live, okay, um, is that we will just trade it. If it goes one way, that's the way we'll go. If that peters out, we'll go the other way. If that peters out, we'll go the other way. If it's not clear, we won't go. If you know what I'm saying, it's called trading, you know, not guessing. It's called trading. You you got to do it. You got to get in the ring and take some punches. You can't be afraid to do so. So you can't just wait and go like, oh, but I, I really want everything to be perfect. You know, <laughs> never going to happen. You got to trade it. All right, uh, we're watching EVAX. That's the really not going to happen. I don't think it's not going to perk up. I'm also watching PGY and Agri. But HKD, however, has some possibility. HKD to th this morning is got some volume coming in. We have the market open in about five and a half minutes. In just five and a half minutes, the market will open. And I'm going to get up the futures on that where I have some. Uh, this is on NASDAQ, the Qs. I have a uh, order ready here to trade the market open to go long on this breakout up there. And remember that uh, from the open to the close today on these Fed rate uh, hike decision days, the market has gone up 100% of the time, 2%. <laughs> has gone up 2%, 100% of the time. All right, and so EVAX, uh, none to borrow, so there's not going to be any shorts to really uh, cause that to go public. And see what I'm talking about? That's exactly how it's behaving. Let's go back to EVAX for a minute. We were talking about that earlier. There's, there's see right there, uh, right when it came down and then came back up and then broke that key level, that's normally, that should have been a blip, pew, like that, right? That should have been shorts covering. And there's nothing like that happening. So it's got, it's got nothing but linear demand uh, going on on it. So I don't think that uh, that's really going to play out today uh, in any meaningful way other than grinding up maybe. All right, the market is breaking down before the open. We've got... Uh, about three and a half minutes until the open, I think, somewhere around there. And uh, HKD is kind of doing something. And uh, EVAX, but also a fray. Possibly coming up from the rear with uh, uh, a 10% gain. Pre-market fray, F-R-E-Y. Very low volume, but a bit higher than normal. 600 million. The average volume on Frey is 2 million per day. It's done 600, sorry, not million, 600,000 pre-market. So it's easily going to hit that 2 million number at the open probably. And it's already up about a buck and a half. So there might be something uh, going on there on Frey. Next breakout's at 14.43. Stop at 14.40. Oh, a quick check on Frey. <clears throat> and we see that it is hard to borrow, okay? So that makes it more difficult uh, to have the short covering scenario for it to go public, but it can. It can. Um, you just need to be part of the hard to borrow club program or brokerages in order to be short it. So, um, you know, dumb people are not shorting it. So uh, for that reason, it may not go parabolic fray. Euro dollar. Uh, yeah, it's strong. I could take a quick look at that. Uh, just a dollar in general. <clears throat> ah, very nice. In the middle of the night, it popped up. Damn, I was going to put some money on that because <laughs> I saw it right at the precipice. And uh, I guess it was late and I forgot. All right, so we're probably going to get a breakout today. Uh, this is what I was talking about. Now, the dollar would go up if the Fed decision causes the market to drop. 
So the dollar is pointing to that the market's going to drop. So very interesting, the way it's been correlated anyway. Uh, what's up on Tesla? What, what, what? Oh, a bit of a drop uh, before they open. Okay, that's no big deal. Only a, only a dollar. That's fine. All right. We've got one minute and 10 seconds before the market opens. Yeah, the dollar going up, uh, that's pretty much the only safe haven right now. Because gold ain't, gold ain't it. Gold is breaking down. It broke key levels after two years. Breaking down. It's a very slow trade on gold. Gold moves very slowly. Okay, we got 45 seconds to the market open. Let's get back over to it. Here it comes, 20 seconds. I already talked about it there, Free Holies, <laughs> whatever your name is. <laughs> All right, here we go. Market opening. And it's pulling back at the open. You may want to buy the dip because remember what I said, uh, the market tends to uh, <clears throat> be up all day on uh, Fed talks. EVAC's not going anywhere. Just like we said, HKD kind of dropping. Well, it's around 80. SOBR, I don't know if, uh, Platt, what's your name? I don't know if you're in here. <clears throat> and Elise. All right, I'm in long on the market, and I set my stop loss to uh, right inside of a very good resistance uh, support zone. And then I'll just temporarily set that to a two to one. Chase, your plat. Cool. Not sure what your name. Yeah, there you are. There you are. Welcome in, Chase. Uh, I don't know if Elise got in here. Oh, there she is. Oh, I thought you were French. Uh, what is that? Ruvenangiza. Ru Ruven Ruvenangiza. Ruven Ruvenangiza. What is that? It's not Italian. Is that Turkish? What is that? Ruvenangiza. But um, geez, uh, sounds Italian. Oh, it's African. Okay. <laughs> it was a totally the wrong continent. I mean, talk about being off. Well, anyway, welcome. Ah, French colony. Yeah. I mean, I was thinking, I mean, Elise is a French name and then your email, you know. So I tried to put it together. <laughs> All right, uh, the market is reversing, uh, heading down. This is why I put my stop loss on the day, nested down into a support area. German. Somebody guessed a German, but it could be the way I was saying it because I'm a ruin. <laughs> you might not roll the R, actually. We won't be able to pronounce it. I'll have to hear it from you uh, directly someday, at least. <laughs> All right, uh, that EVAC's not really going. Um, Tesla, how's it doing? Tesla uh, is at about 309, and it looks like um, Apple also at one. Is that correct? 157-ish. 
Yeah, get a zoom in on that. Apple at 157.70, almost 158. Okay, up on the open and holding up. Tesla, uh, mixed, mixed open, um, generally up, but it looks like it's ranging off the open. It's at about 309, so it's semi holding there. And Amazon going the other way. Amazon uh, fading. And then sector wise, let me see if I have, it's a little bit too early. Still with four minutes trading only going on, uh, still too early to see. But uh, we do expect the day to be light volume. We're in September. What's my, I need FedEx to tank. <laughs> I'm not sure, you know, if I can make that happen. S&P 500, a uh, little bit more supported. Use in general, pulling back. The Dow, we're coming uh, <clears throat> into the close of yesterday. Let's take a look at this is the 15 second chart. Let's jump over the two minutes so we can get a little more trading on the chart. This shall be an interesting trading day. So yesterday we did end up trading below average volume, just a little low, <clears throat> which was more than I expected. Uh, but I do expect today will be even lower. Are you holding meds through the week? Uh, we need You need to exit meds or any trade if it doesn't follow through. Let me take a look. If meds breaks a dollar twenty, you need to exit. And it's just about there. Definitely need to. What's the other one you're holding? You got three. So SOBR. That's already failing out. You can exit SOBR completely, one hundred percent. Uh that should stop should have been set at around two fifty. Two dollars and fifty cents. Okay, exit uh, SOBR, ATXS, ATXS, ah, okay. ATXS, you can uh, keep holding. That's good. Looks beautiful. I hope it breaks out. Um, and then meds uh was a, an overnight penny stock trade looks like it didn't happen uh probably you should cut that let me just uh, double check that one more time yeah dollar 20 would be your egg dollar 19 if it breaks dollar 20 dollar 19. wow what a fail kindle on evax let's see yeah i mean this is what we expected evax not to be able to do what it wants to do there's no extra um unproportional supplier demand situation going on there and you already see that this is the top from earlier today so this would be approximately resistance and it's basically going to get trapped in that zone there i think 
you know, uh, because it has this high volume resistance. Look at that. It, it went right into it and rejected off of it. And um, it has this established pre-market support area. So it's just going to get probably trapped all day. Uh, or if it does fail out, it's because everybody bailed. Uh, and then you'll know that because it'll drop below 290. Did you, RJ, did you, were you part of the group? Uh, were you part of the class last week? Um, last week or the week before where we talked about um, how to draw those zones based on the volume? How to correctly? Okay, good. So can you see that there? It's like it's real obvious, kind of like what's happening. It's clear as day. Um, and by the way, if you use TradingView to do that kind of stuff, which I like to do, anybody out there, um, you can set it to extend to the right your your squares that you draw, your rectangles, and that's what I've done. So it helps create that zone projection. Okay, the market has found a bottom in that uh, <clears throat> area. See, I've got that same kind of thing going on here. And look what the market did. So that's why I put my stop on the other side of that. You don't want to get stopped out necessarily if it's going to end down there. But if it happens, it happens, and it's just, it's just probabilities. You guys over on TikTok, uh, make sure you share the stream uh, and give me lots of likes. Thanks. What about Lucid? Okay, if you're going to give me a, you know, ask me to look up a ticker, you guys over on TikTok, you got to let me know why. Is it for a day trade? Is it for an overnight? Is it a swing trade? Is it for investment? Is it a short? I have no idea. If you don't know, uh, then you shouldn't even be trading. So that could potentially have been the bottom down there on the market. We'll see where we go from here. <clears throat> I've never seen price action like EVAX. Well, because it's a nothing. I definitely have seen price action like that, but those you're talking about those blips? I think that's, you know what that is? That's just FOMO. That's just, that's moronity. That's just somebody thinking they're getting it at the low so they put a market order in of lots of um, number of volume, and it goes and blasts through the level two. But then over there, you know, just below 3.5 is a huge, hey, get me out of here, stop order, and then it pushes it down. So there's probably a wall in the level two. I'm not looking at the level two, but there's probably a wall in the level two just below 3.5 if slash 3.5. Yeah, it looks like um, Steve is just trading the ping-ponging there. Grabbing it at 3, selling it at 320. Grabbing it at, I mean, he's just scalping, scalping. And um, it's safe to scalp because of what I said. It's it's not going to give you any volatility whips uh, because it's none to borrow. Somebody said something on TikTok. Let me see what that was. Is there a market cap you deal in or only? Or is any stock on the table excluding OTCs? No, I even exclude, even including OTCs. Uh, definitely including OTCs. No, we trade in the group here. We trade everything, including Tesla. We're on Tesla right now on a swing trade. So we swing trade, we day trade. We scalp, we high frequency trade, small caps, OTCs, pennies, mid caps, big caps, macro, the dollar, uh, gold, oil, the market, index trading, um, everything. 
How much is my group? I think uh, what you should do is you should just come get a trial. It's free for a week. And then find out how much it is, you know, because it really makes no sense if you can't figure out how valuable it is to you. You know, come check it out. It's free for a week. It's free. Free for a week. Come check it out and see how much value that is worth to you. How much would you pay? How much would be a good price? And then let me know what you think is a good price. And if it's higher than what we charge, you know, maybe I'll raise the prices. Thanks. <laughs> Chase says the group is worth thousands. Kelly says uh, free is good. I think he said it like that too. Oh, we had a strong rejection for some reason off of uh, the uh, open, the market open price. Not necessarily seeing it that strong on the S&P 500, but it was pretty strong on the Qs. Maybe that came from Amazon or somewhere. Tesla, a very large block. Mike says, I joined after one of Evan's call-outs made me thousands. Nice. I thought you were said callous. I joined after one of Evan's callous uh, comments. <laughs> I need to get my glasses checked. Ugh. Where would you stop out and take profit on your NASDAQ trade? Uh, just underneath this region here. Uh, let's see on the Qs, because you're probably talking about Qs. Um, yeah, it's hard to see in pre-market. Uh, I mean, uh, because it's not all there as the. Like yesterday, uh, it's probably on NASDAQ, I mean on the Qs, it's probably 289, uh, 288.9, somewhere in there. Uh, maybe a little bit lower. Frey is curving up. Okay, yeah, Frey, uh, you guys, Frey, F-R-E-Y. What are your views on Sundial post-reverse split and their new acquisitions? Curious if I should buy back in and hold for a value stock, right? Uh, you did, let me take a look at that later today. I'll be on at um, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then I'll, I'm going to dive deep into that for you. We'll check out the cash flows. We'll check out its debt situation. Uh, we'll check out everything, okay? So hopefully try to be here, you know, and remind me. <laughs> the bag that you'd love to exit. All right. Woo. We just had a strong move up and over. I don't know if we made a new high of the day on the market, but we definitely had a nice strong move there upward. Okay, good. You know, Cray, you know, make sure you follow. Hey, you guys, uh, on TikTok, we fell below 100. We're at 99 watching. Uh, anytime we fall below 100, you know, it's not worthwhile for me to be streaming on TikTok. So share the stream, click likes, a whole bunch of millions of gazillions of times. Boost that stream if you enjoy watching it for free. Uh, but we are live in the group. If you're interested in joining the group, uh, you can click the link in my bio. Thank you very much. Looking good. We're up to 101. Making a little progress. Try clicking share on the stream. Nope, now we're back down to 97. All right, the market has reversed on the day. The lows are in. 
at the moment, okay? At the moment. Does that mean the lows are in and we're never going to see that low ever again in life? No, that's not what it means. The lows are in. The lows are in uh, just means for the moment. <laughs> so uh, it's still um, uncertain where the highs are. We just broke the uh, open and made a new high on the day. And whether or not that's going to be a, a little intraday trend going on. Woo! What a strong move there. Yeah, look at that. Very nice. Nice. What are we watching? Uh, what are we watching? What are we watching? Well, we're watching the market mostly at the moment uh, because there's not much else going on except, you know, Tesla, uh, you know, and we're already in it, uh, is about at 310. I was just noticing, by the way, on the TV tonight on uh, Jay Leno's Garage, Elon Musk on the show. That'll be fun. Leno's Garage, Elon Musk. Uh, did you see that? Uh, what's her name? Elizabeth Warren has a bill that she proposes. <laughs> Fuck, is that dangerous? She has a bill that pre she proposes that includes limiting Congress uh, members from trading. Oh, boy. I would stay away from her bills and get that written up somewhere else. You know, uh, that sounds dangerous as fuck. I'd like to see what kind of backdoor uh, clauses are in that motherfucking bill. Oh, sure. Yes, we would. We'll be happy to limit Congress members from trading. That's what you wish? Oh, sure. <laughs> yes. Just agree to this 487 con page contract and you will get no commerce members trading anymore <laughs> yeah sure i trust elizabeth warren jesus christ <laughs> all right the market uh, just made another new high uh, you know will that be the top well, you know what's it going to do today we shall see we shall see shells by the she sore. <laughs> we shall see. Yeah. yeah. I have a she sore. <laughs> Has anybody got a she sore? Uh, you can tell that even though despite I'm drinking water, that I have had my coffee. <laughs> you know when I've had my <laughs> – RJ says I've had a double coffee this morning. Actually, I think – you know, I've been telling my wife, can you just make sure you, sh you also throw a sprinkle of espresso in with the freshly grinded Guatemalan beans, you know. And uh, I think she has been. I think she, I think she has been. The neurons are connecting. <laughs> the neurons are connecting. They're firing. We're getting information connected we've never seen before. You know, I feel like the guy in, uh, what was that movie? The Hangover, coming down the escalator. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to run into a wall and just bonk <laughs> pretty soon here. Yeah, so nothing going on on EVAX. You don't even need to really watch that. I mean, we understand it's not going to really make the moves. Over on Frey, we could do a quick little analysis because maybe it's a short if anybody wants to short. Uh, I forget. I think Frey is hard to borrow, Club. So if you are able to short that, uh, there might be something there. Let's take a quick look at that. And um, that's what it looks like. looks like it's short right now. It looks like this was the... Uh, the high volume zone and it just pushed into that rejected that's building a short position you can do it or you can just you know go for it fray probably you know what though it's really not up enough to make it val uh, worthwhile as a short just to fyi if you're going to short you want to go after things that um had an extraordinary pop so they can have an extraordinary drop if only we had DWAC morning, a DWAC morning combined with the double coffee energy. 
Yeah, I think when we were in Dwack, I was like, all right, so what you want to do is you want to get in here at 180. There we go. And then it pops. You know, I take a little profit under 200 right there. Oh, look at that. It moved over 200 and it is now moving to 210. Look at it go. It's going to 2, 215, 220. This is looking quite good. <laughs> yeah, that's, I don't know if I had my coffee that morning when Dwack was, was freaking out. <sighs> like an airplane pilot. You know, if you look to your right, you'll notice. Yeah. All right. So that I think we've put it possibly put in the high of the day because uh, that seemed like a lot of volume and a lot of pressure to push it up and over uh, <clears throat> some of this prior uh, volume, prior congestion. And so if that is the high of the day uh, and that is the low of the day, then now we just need to see, is it going to range? Is it going to trend in any direction? I mean, I you know, what we probably expect it to do based on prior history is for it to trend slightly, grind slightly upward. You were in Dwack that day, so were we both days. And uh, on some of the um, dead cat bounces, what did you say there? Most money I ever made trading. Oh, man, those days come a couple times a year. But that's about it. And we show up every day, uh, you know, for that. SLNG is open, 825. Uh, what do you mean? It's open for trading. It's an, uh, it's uh, an IPO. SLNG <clears throat> is halted, it looks like, you guys. SLNG not showing up on my list because it didn't have a prior day to compare it to. SLNG halted at 825 after opening around 5. I think at 550 was the open or 6. And uh, it's now at 825, halted and hot. Keep an eye on that one. SLNG. Uh, what's that? Do I have to act at 17 now? Yeah, right. Totally different when GME was at 120 and forming a wedge. Everyone was like, get the fuck in this. It's a national emergency. Target 190. And we hit it. <laughs> I remember that. And I think it hit like 192 and then came back. I was like, it fucking nailed it. But then the next day it continued to much higher but that day i was right you were watching live when dwack went down had a limit that didn't get filled that morning ah damn no it's gonna be fairly boring until uh, i'm gonna get on about a half an hour to an hour before the fed meeting uh at 2 p.m today so you guys tune back in at 2 p.m that's fine. All you need is a few shares. Uh, Eastern time at 1 p.m. Eastern time, I will try to be on uh, that early, and then we're going to see where everything takes us uh, with the Fed releasing its information. Until then, don't get too committed. Don't get pot committed to anything. Uh, you should already have multiple days of built-up uh, padding on any position that uh, the Fed should release you know, and uh until then uh all right let's go into the group and uh thank you for showing up this morning very low volume morning not much gonna happen trust me until the fed does their thing all right let's pop over to the group thank you very much new members welcome and uh if you go back into the group now uh you want to hang out for day trading kind of in the momentum room um, otherwise, member chat area is fine. If anybody wants to buddy trade anything, though today might not be the best day for it, you go over to the Active Trader Lounge. All right. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a good morning. See you in a little bit. Uh, I'll try to make it 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Very important. All right. See you then. Good morning. <laughs>